Duke Slater. Are you familiar with all of his story, or is there anything you know about Duke Slater? Um, I've, I've, I don't know too much about him, but I, I just see his uh, cleats in the indoor. Do you know much about him or his story? Um, as an Iowa fan, growing up as an Iowa fan, uh, I really don't know his story that, that, that much. Um, I, the first I've really heard of him was actually here um, with the coaches and stuff. So um, that, was, that was kind of my first um, time hearing his name um, and, and his story. What do you know about Duke Slater? Are you aware of who he is and what kind of to the program? A uh, little bit, not too much information though, but um, I guess I got to look more into it. Nineteen twenty-one, the team that brought Iowa national honors. It was a team of greats: the Divines, Lock, Duke Slater, Shuttleworth. Well, Duke Slater is important. Uh, first of all, he's the first uh, Black All-American in Iowa football history. Actually, uh, he was an All-American for the first time as a sophomore, second team, and then as a senior, 1921, he was the first team All-American. And then it was also the uh, first African-American in the uh, College Football Hall of Fame. So he's a pretty significant man. He was way ahead of his time, in my view. Uh, 1921, as an example, they were 7-0, and claimed the mythical national championship. Uh, Duke Slater uh, became the first African-American first-team All-American uh, that year. He was uh, not only a smart human being, but he could play multiple positions. He outthought the opposition. Uh, in his three years at Iowa, the Hawks went 23-6-1. That year you speak of, uh, they uh, won the Big Ten Championship, clearly at 7-0, uh, but they, they dominated teams. So Duke's father, George Slater, was a minister at an AME church in Clinton, Iowa. And George Slater had a profound impact on his son's life, but particularly when it came to the subject of education. Uh, there was actually a story when Duke Slater was in high school. He wanted to quit school and just go ahead and get a job, start earning some money. And George Slater actually allowed Duke to quit school, but he got Duke a job uh, on the Mississippi River cutting ice in sub-zero degree temperatures. And just as George expected, it wasn't more than a day or two before Duke Slater went to his dad and said, hey dad, I'd like to go back to school. And that was a turning point in Duke Slater's career with respect to his education. And that eventually led him to the University of Iowa, to earning a law degree, and to having an outstanding legal career. You know, he played 90 games in the NFL for several teams, but he was, I believe, the first black player in the NFL his rookie year. So he, he was always you know, a trailblazer in, in that sense. Uh, and he uh, you know, became a federal judge, so he, obviously a smart man who did something beyond football after his football career. He was the first African-American lineman in the National Football League from the early 1920s to the early 1930s. Uh, the, he was the only African-American uh, lineman and the only African-American to play in the league in 1927 and 1929. So uh, uh, racism was rampant in the NFL. The owners did not want black players in the league. Duke Slater broke the mold. Uh, he knocked the door down. Duke Slater became a pioneer for black athletes at the University of Iowa and it's no exaggeration to say that Slater literally changed the complexion of the Hawkeye Athletic Department for decades to come. And then he went on to become uh, the first black judge uh, in Chicago, uh, uh, elevated to superior court. Uh, he, he, did, he did so many wonderful things for the African-American race on the field and off the field. But to me, he was a man of unquestioned integrity and professionalism and uh, so kind to people. He was, he was considered the leader of the team. And if you're a leader of a football team, 
your teammates have to respect you. So I, I know there was great respect for him, not only how good he was, but the way he carried himself on and off the field. The Heartland is brought to you by Wellmark, Blue Cross, and Blue Shield, serving Iowans for more than 80 years. This season, choose health care coverage you can count on from Wellmark. The Hawkeyes have been impressive in wins over Rutgers and Michigan State. Can they make it three straight over the Big Ten's top defensive team on the road tonight? And that's why we're here to find out. It's Iowa and Wisconsin from the Cole Center in Madison. Roaming in the lane, throws a pass back to C.J. Frederick. He drives into the paint. Pull-up jumper is good by C.J. Hopefully that means he's going to have a big night. Welcome back, C.J. Frederick. Luca down the left side of the lane, whirls into the paint, splits a double team, lays it up and in. Split a double team of Reavers and Aleem Ford, 4-3 Iowa. Rebound by Joe Wieskamp, the air ball. Garza for a short jumper, good, left to the key. Joe Wieskamp saved the possession. Yeah, he followed the flight of the ball, went and got it. And Garza clears for Bohannon as the Hawks are looking to add. Wieskamp shooting in transition is good. Sticks a three from deep in the right wing. And all of a sudden, Iowa's up 9-3. Iowa up six early. Jump hook is good by Garza inside. Greg Gard may have to get a timeout before he wants to. 11-3 Hawkeyes. And they have no answer for Luca Garza. They just got to wear him out. Here's Garza, 4-3, top of the circle, right through. Potter's not going to ch chase him out there, and Garza gives Iowa a double-digit 11-point advantage. Wieskamp, stop and go move in the lane, and a pass to Garza results in a dunk. Little high-low action there, Bobby. 16-10 Hawkeyes. Keegan Murray all the way to the basket. Step back jumper in the lane. Good. Goes down through. Here's Toussaint for the Hawkeyes. Drives into deep territory and knocks down the jumper. A backdoor feed for Patrick McCaffrey, who scores on the layup. Beautifully executed by Joe Toussaint. Here's Wieskamp for three. Down through the well it goes for Joe W. And Muscatine stand up and take a bow. Wieskamp with his second three-point goal. He's got six points. Out front, Garza for three. Good again, Luca Garza. Splashdown, his second long-range jumper of the night. And the Hawkeye lead is cut to 10. Another three, yes, sir, by Garza. The big men throwing in threes all of a sudden. Unbelievable. Look, guards are showing America that he is the national player of the year. Back to the wing, and Connor McCaffrey drives inside, scores. A tough shot, up and in, heavy traffic. High post right to C.J. Frederick, 4-3. Yes, sir. Well-designed call. Three seconds to go in the half. Here's a corner jumper by Wieskamp that's down through, and I mean Tyler Wall was right there defensively. That's how zeroed in with that jump shot Wieskamp has been lately. Wieskamp skip pass left of the lane for Garza. Jump hook is good. Down through, soft touch by Luca. Hawks need a score here, 44-39 Iowa. Here's Keegan Murray, turns the corner, gets into the lane. Layup is no good, put back Nungy, good. And a foul called on Wisconsin. Wisconsin steals it, a three is good by Brad Davison. Points off turnovers, 49-46. Garza scores inside it, whirls in on the paint. It had uh, single coverage with Micah Potter and Luca with a head fake to his right, rolled back to his left. Jordan Bohannon looking for Garza inside, throws to Jack Nungy instead. His three banked it in, we'll take it. <laughs> nice shot, Jack Nungy, just when the Hawkeye needed a little shot in the arm, Nungy with the bank three. 55-49, Wieskamp tries to match it and does. A deeper three than that, than Davison's from the wing. Let's see if the Hawks can turn a turnover into points. Wieskamp step back three, yes sir. Deep three from right in front of Fran McCaffrey in the Iowa bench. Wieskamp has been clutch in this Badger comeback. Five and a half to go. Wieskamp for Garza. His standstill three in. Rattled in and out and back in. Now when you're the college player of the year, you get rolls like that. Out on the perimeter. Here's CJ right inside to Garza. Shot off the glass is good. The All-American has scored five straight. And Iowa extends the lead back to 14. Wisconsin will play it out. Bohannon throws up a three and hits it. The dagger, his first field goal of the night. And the final score will be Iowa 77, Wisconsin 62. The Heartland is brought to you by Hy-Vee. Save time and shop online with Hy-Vee Isles Online. Go to islesonline.com to get started.
University of Iowa Healthcare, changing medicine, changing lives. Even an empty Carver Hawkeye Arena, minus the fans, of course, there is a buzz in the air this afternoon as the Hawkeyes seek their fourth consecutive Big Ten victory. Luca Garza will become Iowa's all-time leading scorer, at least we hope. Garza is 14 points away from eclipsing the great Roy Marble's career mark of 2,116. Now they switch back. Garza gets the ball anyway. Up and good off glass. They tried to double him with two 6'4 guys. Garza snares the rebound. Out top for Connor. McCaffrey. He's open for three. Knocks it down and a foul called on Seth Lundy. Split the net did Connor McCaffrey and a chance for a four-point play. Harza grabs the lob in from Bohannon. Whirls into the paint on Buttrick. Jump hook is good. Here's Garza. Banging bodies with Hera. Spins to the baseline. Jump hook is good. Vintage Luca Garza. Garza with four. McCaffrey now bounces to Patrick on the wing. He comes and meets the ball. Give and go. Inside layup good by Keegan Murray. Beautiful recognition by Patrick right inside to the big guy. Now to the wing and Bohannon. Out top for Frederick. This three is good. Great ball movement on the perimeter Excellent there. Excellent ball movement. Went inside to Luca Garza. 30 to 29. Penn State. Six turnovers on the Hawkeyes. Garza with a dunk. Gives Iowa the lead back. Frederick will shoot. Frederick scores. Gets the ball high over his head. Bohannon cross court for Connor. Back door for Garza. Score and a layup. A layup and an and one coming for Luca Garza turns the corner. He's going to have to force one up on the baseline. No, Hera with a jump hook air ball. And uh, count it. Goaltending goal called on Tony Perkins. Down seven after leading by 13 early in the game. Here's a backdoor lob. Wieskamp lays it up and in. Good job by Joe. He got it back. Iowa misses the jump shot. Iowa gets the rebound. Wieskamp lays it up and in. What a turn of events there. Joe all the way to the basket. Up and in. Wieskamp starts the second half with layups. Three straight baskets for Joe Wieskamp. Wieskamp stands still three. Good. Curled it in. Wieskamp finding his range here to start the second half. He's certainly come alive. Here's Nungy for the Hawkeyes. Drives into the lane. Scoop lay up. Good. Jack finally got one to go. Joe, hook a pass to Keegan Murray in the corner. His three. Good. Keegan Murray with a deep corner three from the Iowa bench. And the Hawks are back on top by two. He lobs it inside to Nungy. He stumbles to the floor, but finds an open Patrick McCaffrey. And he curls in a three from the opposite corner. McCaffrey with a big triple. Here's Bohannon. No look pass to Garza, and there it is. A high screen and roll by Garza, and, and how fitting that Jordan Bohannon is at the other end of that assist for the all-time record-breaking basket by Luca Garza. Yeah, awesome. Congratulations, Luca. And beautiful pass from Jordan Bohannon. Equally important, the Hawks have the lead back 56-54. What a great no-looker by j -Bo. Right back inside to Garza. He rolls in. The jump hook is up. Tucks it down through. Penn State's really coming after Iowa. Here's Garza from Wieskamp. Sets it up and in. Hawks trying to get this thing under control. j -Bo for three. Yes, sir! Right through with five and a half to go in the game. Timeout, Penn State. The Iowa Hawkeyes prevail and defeat the Nittany Lions 74-68. Today's broadcast is powered by Extreme Internet. Feel the speed. Feel the power. Feel extreme. U.S. Cellular is proud to be the official wireless sponsor of the Iowa Hawkeyes. U.S. Cellular, connecting Hawkeye Nation. Now, I'm really proud of my team, though, that at halftime, we all just kind of took a deep breath. Um, we knew that they wouldn't be able to keep up those numbers, especially if our defensive improved, if our defensive rebounding improved. And, um, you know, second half defense, we held them to 26 points in the second half after giving up 29 in the second quarter. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that we have 29 assists on only eight turnovers. That's a good number for us. And then four people in double figures. And, and Kate Martin's special game. This was a special game for Kate Martin. I mean, 11 assists, zero turnovers, two steals. Perfect five for five from the uh, three three point. I mean, it just was a special game for her. But four people in double figures. Um, I love that balance. I think I just got into the rhythm of the game. Uh, my teammates were doing a great job of getting open in the, against their zone, and I was just hitting them with the passes, and they were knocking down the shots. And then 
I think it just started to come to me throughout the game, and after hitting one and two, I just felt confident and just kept shooting, and thankfully I was making them. Well, unfortunately, we have a lot of experience with coming out of halftime down, and so we were confident going into that second half, but we really just had a defensive mindset going into the second half, and we only we held them to only 26 points um, in the second half, so that's really where things changed and we started to box out better. They also shot the ball super well. It seemed like they didn't miss a single three, so um, that's going to happen sometimes, and we weren't like, oh my gosh, we're out of this game. I think we, we have a good mentality and we're fighters. We've been in those situations before, and that's what I told our team. I'm like, we've been here before. Maybe that's not a good thing, but um, we'll be able to fight back, and we'll be just fine as long as we clean up the things that we know are, we're doing wrong right now. Yeah, I mean, that was definitely something out there, but I think we all know and Coach knows that that is an area that we're normally pretty good at. Uh, we we just kind of needed a we needed to get our butts kicked to realize that I mean we got to try harder in it, and obviously we weren't going as hard as we could. So yeah, that was definitely mentioned for sure. But um, I'm really proud of the way we responded and just came out of the came out of the gates after half. to you by Iowa's Corn Farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Athletico Physical Therapy, it all starts here. Latham High Tech Seeds is proud to partner with the Iowa men's basketball team in raising money for every free throw made by the Hawkeyes all season long through the Hawkeye Charity Stripe promotion. All proceeds benefit the American Cancer Society and Coaches vs. Cancer program here in the state of Iowa. Latham High Tech Seeds, cheering on the Hawkeyes from the free throw line and helping with cancer awareness efforts all across the state of Iowa. Bob Davis has always been a Hawkeye. Going into college, he had never even considered going anywhere else. Earning his master's degree in environmental engineering, Bob went on to live and work in Chicago and Kansas City. Along the way, he passed his love of the Hawkeyes on to his kids and other family members because as Bob says, no matter where you go, your school will always stay with you. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.